that is Flo Rida. I love that song, Club Can't Handle Me. <laughs> Not that I identify with it because I am a good girl. And I'm, as, as Jeff says, I'm pr- a prude. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's the prude hour. <laughs> anyway, sitting with me, Olivia from Wandering Rose. It's good to have you back. It's good to be back. Thanks for having me, Kelly. My pleasure. I was really excited about this Dr. Spins propaganda machine. I didn't quite understand the title, so maybe you can break that down for Yeah, us. sure. <laughs> but, but it's a film and video festival, and what's so exciting yes. is it's accessible to all. Yes. Anybody can enter it, and that's that just made me very excited, I got to say. It makes me excited, too, actually. We're really – the point of what we wanted to do is we wanted to create a film event – um, calling it a festival might be a little bit misleading for people. Who, okay. who, well, well, yeah. just for people who are filmmakers, because you tend to have this image of an event that yeah. you sit down, you sit at a screen, or like you, Sundance, or right? Something, exactly. Or, you know, yeah, con yeah. Or that, that you get different venues and different yeah, times yeah, 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 and, yeah. and different screenings. This mm. is going to be something a little bit different than that. This is going to be um, different films playing uh, in in the same venue at the same time um, at Loops um, gotcha. on, on you know we really want to encourage filmmakers to allow us to screen their films in different ways on the ceiling and the alleyways on I you know that. through the store windows all sorts of different stuff to create an experience for people and oh, then there'll also so be great. viewing stations for more narrative films films that you actually have to sit down so we'll have headsets and a TV oh and, isn't that wonderful um, so you know it's going to be really different um hopefully so and, wh- where's what's the location um the first three locations that we have in the lockdown are of course bloom on main street um we're gonna be clearing that out and have uh, video stations and all the screening set up there bloom two um just down the street and there's actually a loft above Wildcat. Uh, that's kind of a secret <gasps> loft. Uh, and I've be, been in that loft yes. because it used to be Kramer's Shoes. And that's oh. how I put myself for the f- <laughs> first couple years of college was I like selling shoes at Kramer's. That's great. But that's awesome. And Wildcat up in the loft? Mm-hmm. Up in the loft at now Wildcat. Now, where's Bloom 2? Bloom 2 is on Pearl Street. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so so those- this is happening um, at these three locations simultaneously. Mm-hmm. Like yes. you wander. Yes. And you go to one, two, three. Absolutely. It's a okay. video crawl. Um, and so oh, these so are awesome. called pop-up galleries, which means that we, um, it's a it's a term that's, being, that's been coined over the last few years, especially with the recession when people have been taking over abandoned storefronts and art movements and making them galleries for, temp- for a temporary period of time. So they're called a pop-up gallery. That's awesome. Um, I love it. So we're really excited about this and, um, and that the idea is that uh, guests will get a map. Um, it's a free event. Uh, they'll be able to wander about as they it's as free? they choose. Absolutely. It's free. Uh huh. Yeah. So we're just doing this because we think it'd That's be amazing. So much fun. Um, and um, so yeah, you will just be wandering around and getting to see different films and getting to experience in different ways. The more film submissions we get, people, the more venues we'll be able to have. Oh, yeah. So um, we'd love to expand beyond three. Uh, we're going to talk about that real quick. Yes. Though, I want to I want to ask you the date. Oh, the date. The, well, the date for the event will be November thirteenth. Um, we're going to do it from sunset to midnight. Oh, <laughs> so this is a Saturday or what is that? This is a Saturday. Yes. Oh my gosh. I'm writing this all down because I'm going to be popping this up on my blog. Excellent. And, um, and then where, where is there a website? We there is. Okay. Um, actually, if you go to wanderingrose.org now, we all know that the okay. website's not finished yet, but there is a link on the homepage. Okay. And good. if you go to that link, there's a few pages that are up about just specifically about this event. Okay. So let's talk about submissions. Yes. And this is open to everyone. Absolutely. So you're going to get some people that are more experienced. Yes. We're going to get some people more experienced, some people who've never filmed anything anything before right um and and we really want that you know yeah. and, and i think that i can't can't um say that enough that right. this isn't about whether you make you know what you consider the best film or or whatever what we want to see is people out there and trying and using their creative energy to to put something together and and just you know the experience of putting something together and then and um, and also exhibiting it and exhibiting it in this new and different way and getting your stuff out there and seeing. So you went to school for film. I did go to school for film. Um, I went uh, down to L.A. and I spent wow. a few years down there studying filmmaking. Um, and and actually, you know, I think that um, one of the things that I had written myself a little note here about yeah. was that uh, this type of film event isn't um, 
it might seem kind of crazy and weird, but it actually has a really established history. Um, and I just wanted to to mention a few different things that are yeah. going on currently and that have happened in the past that, you know, people know that this is a real thing. Like this is something that's considered a legitimate. If you want to take your cell phone and you want to film something <gasps> and you want to put it into the film festival, that's a totally legitimate way of making a film and is considered so by that. the filmmaking community. <gasps> nice. Um, and, and a few different, you know, kind of, it started back in a long history of, of ways as a as a kind of a counterculture movement in the film industry against uh, Hollywood, offering something else that Hollywood didn't offer, something accessible to the to the people and to the community. And kind of one of the best examples I could think about that uh, is the Dogma 94 movement, which um, oh, if you've heard funny. of um, Lars von Trier, um, he's, a, no. he's a European filmmaker, um, and he made a whole bunch of very, very famous films. Um, and... Uh, Dancer in the Dark with Bjork is one of them and um, different films like that. And his whole concept of Dogma of Friday, he went to Cannes and he, his film got into Cannes Film Festival. And he sat there and he took a big fat book and he slammed it on the table and he said, um, you know, I really feel like everything that's happening here at Cannes is too manufactured, and not accessible enough by the people. Really? So he, he put down this book called Dogma 94 because it was in 1994. And he said that uh, he thought the future of filmmaking was in uh, consumer-grade cameras uh, that were affordable by the masses, uh, natural sound, so not having any fancy sound equipment, just capturing what was in the recording device on your on your film camera, because usually wow. they they record a whole bunch of other stuff and build a soundtrack. Oh, Everything okay. Everything you hear in a film is it's all enhanced. It's all and enhanced, all that, yeah. and and there's so many different things. There's going people on. that just do that. They yeah, just yeah. do the there, audio. There's right? a whole department just right. just for people to manufacture the audio landscape mm -hmm. you hear in film right and um and natural lighting so no no other light sources usually they're big lights you know creating just the mood and just the right. flashes of light that you wanted and and so what his idea was that you can make a film and you can make a film that's just as authentic and just as real as as what um people do in hollywood and what they're doing in the mass markets um on you know in in your everyday life it was about what you captured not how you captured it um, wow. And so you know, this this went on, and it, it was uh, very influential. And you can see it even with, um, you know, the different films now that are shot with the, the kind of a grainy look and handheld, right. and you know, are really what jerky. was that 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 scary movie? Yeah, that that's we saw the one I'm, that was, I'm trying. Yeah, to I'm, I can't think of that. I saw it. <laughs> yeah.